guys, this is Laura here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe down, oh, Siri, not now. <sighs> Be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell button so you don't miss any future videos, any future cringe-worthy videos or uh, MLM fails, horror stories, deep dives, etc. anti-MLM. And today we are going to go over some MLM horror stories. Let's get started. Okay. So this person actually got contacted by someone she barely knew in high school. It says, reaching out, but I don't support multi-level marketing. And then the distributor goes, so we're not actually an MLM. Some of the big takeaways that separate us from MLMs is, we don't like to market on social media with our name. We don't like to give out our name. Okay. Okay. Sounds like an MLM. And we don't sell individual products like MLMs do. We just like to educate others on natural products and the membership we offer. So you offer natural products and memberships, but you don't sell individual products like MLMs do. What? I don't think they understand what an MLM is. We've also been around for over 35 years and we focus more on consumer direct marketing than anything else. Okay, direct marketing is the same as network marketing, is the same as multi-level marketing, is the same as pyramid scheme with a product. Just saying. There's a lot of names for it. And direct marketing, direct sales, same thing. We don't advertise, so everything is word of mouth. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, first off, multi-level marketing, network marketing, most of the advertisement they do is by word of mouth. It's by sending to people that they don't know and or to people they do know, like their friends and their families and stuff. What's really funny is that this is someone that this person barely knew in high school that's reaching out and contacting them about their MLM. So obviously they are like reaching out in this, you know, so, okay. They don't say what name they are for the MLM. That is a huge red flag. That is definitely how MLMs work didn't say it with Arbon. didn't say it like you don't want to give out your MLM name because then people will research it and they'll know they'll see all these lawsuits come up like if it were Monet they wouldn't want to say that maybe it's like hair and skincare like you know whatever but then they wouldn't want to specifically say Monet because then all these lawsuits about the hair falling out and stuff they might say it I don't know like it, I guess it depends on the the consultant but like a lot of these MLMs are taught to avoid saying the name you know Amway doesn't say the name like a lot of these companies don't say the name until you're in it like it works a lot of, a lot of these I see it all the time they'll post Facebook posts they won't mention the name they'll say oh I just started a health and wellness company blah 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 and that's what I did with Arbon. I regret it now but this is how this works. So I just find this post to be really enlightening that this person is so brainwashed that they say we're not actually an MLM and these are the reasons why. And I'm debunking that now because first off, it's really sketchy to not give out your name in the first place of your business. Who does that? Who wouldn't want to say I work at this company? because I'm supporting this company. Everything with this screams MLM, but yet this person is saying we're not an MLM because of the very things that make us an MLM. So there you go. Okay, so this next story is called My MLM Sixth Sense. It's kind of hard to say, sixth sense, okay. So for some context, I am a junior in college and I'm currently applying for summer internships. Oh, congrats. So yesterday I'm working on an essay for a class when I receive a text from my mom. 
her friend who's in a local mom group saw a job offering and asked my mom if I would be interested. She sent the actual post to my mom who sent it to me and it goes as follows. Hi everyone, I am looking for an intern to help with social media, Pinterest, Instagram, Reels with a focus on lifestyle, real estate, and wellness. Email me if you have anyone. And then attached her email address. I must have honed my MLM sixth sense from watching a lot of MLM videos, so I immediately got weird vibes from this post. Using her email, I managed to track her profile down on Facebook and did a little snooping. Turns out she is or was a part of a wine MLM called Scout and Cellar. Hmm, don't think I've heard of that one, but I know there are some wine MLMs out there as well. I scrolled down through a couple of posts and found a comment on one of her posts looking for new consultants. It reads as follows. You took my money and then bailed? Zero updates, no communication about the shipping status of the purchase, and you ignore all of my messages. And now I have to go through the process of opening a claim with Facebook just to get my money back. Other buyers, especially young mothers who don't have time for this crap, beware of purchasing anything from Hun's name. I showed my mom's I showed my mom this and she agreed that I should avoid this opportunity. I feel so bad for anyone she's sucked into this scheme, especially since I know she's in at least one mom group. I don't know if my mom told her friend or not, but I kind of want to warn her about this, especially since she's from Brazil and might not know about MLMs. I just hope no one falls for this internship, especially since it's most likely unpaid, a trick for her to recruit you, and is essentially a waste of time. I have to comment on this. First off, this is awesome that this person was able to pick up on those six cents. I wish everybody was able to catch those red flags and I think that's one reason I started this channel so that you know m myself and all the other anti-MLMers out there who have helped me and like helping others out there we're trying to spread awareness there's room for all of us here because we are trying to make sure that we can help more and more people to be able to avoid situations like this where they're getting recruited through various marketing tactics and job posting. You know, I see a lot of these on LinkedIn, for instance. LinkedIn is a big one because they see, like, I don't know what it is. There's, you know, there's stuff like Amway, Cutco, all these different recruiting tactics that are often found there. And when they spin it as a business interviewing for and they make it sound like an internship or a job opportunity and they're really would take anyone that has a pulse and a credit card. So you don't even have to have money, you just have to have a credit card. And they'll say you'll earn it back and then you can use that money you earn to pay the credit card. So they do all these tactics and it's really skeevy, really crappy, really unethical. And I just, kudos for picking up on those red flags. So talking about the red flags, looking at that post. Hi everyone, I am looking for an intern to help with social media. First off, social media. There are social media businesses. There are companies that pay for people to do like marketing for their businesses on social media, like, like as their platform for the legitimate business. Normally they would give a name of their company like you know I don't know let's just say XYZ company and it's not an MLM it is a legitimate company and they need people to be like in this digital age everybody has social media so they need to be out on the social media so that they can connect to their potential customers so there are legitimate things like that there are also like brand deals all that stuff but for this, it doesn't, it says an intern to help with social media. It doesn't say anything about the business, what the business actually entails. It's a little misleading and very generic. And it says with a focus on lifestyle, real estate, and wellness. What? Okay. 
Let's break this down. Lifestyle. Hmm. Real estate. Hmm. Wellness. Hmm. Okay. For one thing, those are all very generic and don't really explain anything. They also don't seem to connect. How are they related? Health and wellness is often associated with MLM. And not to say you can't have a health and wellness company that is legit, but a lot of times these MLMs will say that they're a health and wellness company. I know Arbonne spins it like that and they don't mention their names usually because they don't want you to know. With lifestyle and real estate and social media, these are all red flags when put together and the fact that it's so generic. Also, email me if you have anyone. So anyone, because <laughs> I'm desperate to find anyone that has a pulse and email me, you know, like it, it just, the language of it is also very unprofessional too. I mean, hi everyone, email me. Like it's not, it doesn't really seem like the type of post you would expect from a, well, I mean, I guess since it was, uh, so it was from a mom group too and that's another red flag um because i'm reading it over and it was a local mom group and they do like to prey on mom groups so it, it's one of those things where it, it's on a less professional format but if you see something like that those do have some red flags and so that's kind of what i wanted to point out here. Always make sure you know what is the business. I need to know more, but like if you if you get a lot of red flags like this, that's another thing. They might have people emailing wanting to know more and wanting to know what the business is and then they get into the conversation and then get hooked, you know, into it. So even be wary of that. Always be wary of when they use that type of generalities and red flags. Okay, so this next one is new skin and let's see what it's about. So mom did new skin when I was younger. I only found out now that it's a pyramid scam. I have been the culprit of my parents' separation. What? Okay, I'm literally at a loss for words. How did I only find this out now as an adult by chance? Because of a random Google search at 4 a.m. Scamp in there. Ever since I could remember, my mom's been selling and using new skin stuff. My toothpaste was their product. Hell, the first ever makeup I ever tried was new skin. And Mary Kay, which I assume is also a scam now. Yes, it's always been a scam. Mary Kay has been like the biggest grandmother of MLM scams. I feel so dumb because I legitimately thought it was real. You are not alone. A lot of us think that these companies are real and that's what's so scammy about them. That's what's so unethical is they make it feel like it's a real business, but it, it's, it's not. It's so unethical and scammy and, you know, they're just recruiting you and... Like you don't make money off of it usually. Like 99.6% of people lose money. My mom used to be a stay at home mom, but suddenly when she started doing all that new skin stuff, she suddenly kept going out more. Looking back, my dad would always complain my mom wasn't home enough. I mean, she probably bought into the whole new skin thing, believing she would earn, to be honest. We weren't well off and lived with my dad's parents. I feel so dumb. How did I ever not think it was shady or anything when my mom had so many products and was away a lot, yet it didn't seem to give off any sort of income? Well, my parents finally separated just last year. They fought about finances all throughout my childhood. But now, just looking back, I genuinely just thought New Skin was a normal job parents did. Now that I think about it, once my best friend's mom asked me what my mom did and I told her she sold new skin and she gave me such an odd reaction, now it all makes sense. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry that this has happened, but I want 
this person to know that it's not your fault. It don't feel dumb. Don't feel like you missed something because a lot of the way these companies work is that they prey on people that are vulnerable. And your mom was a vulnerable stay at home mom that was struggling with finances and with, with money. And she thought that what she was doing at the time when she got recruited was something that was going to help out the family and that it was going to provide you guys with financial freedom and business. Like she thought that it was a legitimate business at the time. That from what I'm gathering here, it sounds like your mom was sucked into it at a time when, you know, she was trying to help make ends meet for you guys. And she really does care about that. It's okay that you didn't realize what it was. There are so many predatory MLMs out there and so many that you, you, you don't always realize it at first. My aunt sold Mary Kay. Like my grandmother used to purchase it all the time. Like there's these things that like we look back on now and we just didn't realize. But the thing is that now you do know and so you're able to move forward with that. But oh my gosh, I am so sorry. I, I just want to say I am so sorry that this drove a wedge in your parents' relationship. That's one of the things, that's one of the things about MLMs is that like from a perspective of it destroying relationships, it does a really good job at that. And if you like have a spouse and you're in an MLM, it often will cause conflict financially or with time constraints and these things because you're spending so much time investing in this opportunity where you're not really making enough money to show for it. And you might be losing money in the process. Most likely you are because you're buying the products to sell and you're trying to recruit and it's not working out. Really sorry that this developed the way it did. And geez, I, I, I personally, I know what it feels like to blame yourself and for not seeing the signs of a relationship turning like that. Because, you know, my parents divorced when I was seven years old and I know I, like, I always thought it was my fault. A lot of times we internalize what's happening and for not seeing what's happening, it, it can really upset us. But just know, like, if, if you come across this video, just know that your, your, your mom was doing what she thought was best at the time, and so was your dad. They fell apart because of the differences of issues. I can only infer from what is in this post, but that's what I'm getting, is that, the, is that she was sucked into this predatory company where she wasn't making money, and she, you know, fell in when it was a time when they like to attack, uh, they like to go after um, single moms or, or not single moms, work from home moms. And they like to go after that kind of thing because it's like a potential for an extra source of income. And that gives you freedom to still be stay at home and, and do this. So don't feel bad. Don't feel bad for missing the signs. I missed a lot of signs getting into two MLMs and that's not even to count some of the ones that I was presented with over the years that I bought into without realizing. So don't feel bad. We've all been there and now you know. Keep doing the research and checking out more videos like this one if, if this is some, something you relate to so that you are able to be prepared for next time for, for these kinds of things. Spreading awareness is how we can hopefully help prevent some things like this to happen um, and to help repair relationships down the road. Okay, so this one is a pampered chef story. And it says, I feel like I'm about to lose my two best friends. Oh, right. I have two best friends, E and M. 
He just started selling Pampered Chef after losing a job and moving away. Her husband couldn't find a local job. She also did a brief stint with Arbonne before she moved away. I did not buy any Arbonne from her. I just kept scrolling whenever she posted. Now that she's selling Pampered Chef, she's having online parties and M held a party for her. I did purchase a few things. I liked the products. I assumed, I know, I know, that I'd purchase a few times a year and that would be that. Sure, yeah, you purchase, then you're done. This morning, I was awakened by that ding indicating a private message. It was E asking me to host an online party for M because M wants to sign up as a consultant to help with her financial situation. Now, when I say they're my best friends, that doesn't mean they take my advice. I know that if I try to talk M out of this, it will hurt her terribly. She always claims that she wants my advice, but almost never takes it. She is horrible with money. She gets offended whenever anyone even hints to it. I've kept so much from her because I feel guilty that my husband and I are doing well financially. I don't want to have an online party and I don't want to be guilted into having these parties. How do I gently decline the invitation without hurting them both? I have such crippling anxiety that I don't have many friends and it's very hard for me to say no. Okay, so I remember having parties with us born and I, I know how this system works from an inside perspective and these parties, like if you buy products from an MLM, and this is why I won't support an MLM, even if I, like, even if I do find a product uh, worth it, because a lot of the MLM products are just fillers so that they're not considered a pyramid scheme, so that they're considered a little bit more like a business. And so a lot of them are crappy. They have crappy quality. They're hyped up in price so that you're spending a lot of money like for the crappy products. There are some that people find useful and if it works for you, that's great. But here's the problem. When you start buying from an MLM, from a distributor, from your friend, and you think that's gonna be it, it's not. Because I specifically remember in both Arbonne and Usborne books, and just from all the research and of all the other MLMs out there that you're going to be like put on a list and once you like once you're on there like oh they've bought from me before I should hit them up and see if they want to host a party because then I can open to their network so this is how us born books and more worked a lot with the party system. And so I would have a party, a launch party, and then people from that party, I would do my best to get to recruit people to host more parties from that party. And then from that party, from like from their parties, I would open up my network to their friends and then so on and so forth. So when you buy something from them or attend even one party, they're going to continue to do follow-up and they're going to continue to try and get you to host a party, try to get you to purchase more, try to get you onto their auto ship or whatever it is, or to join their team. So there's all these different things that they're going to hit you up with uh, once you're in it. You think that you can just buy a product to support a friend, but you you would be better off supporting a friend if they like if they really need the money just like send them some venmo or something if you if you if you want but because they probably make more off of that than from like you buying a product in a way that you think you're supporting their business but the problem is it's not their business they didn't make the products when they leave the business they don't have anything to fall back on that is not their product to to do and it's not like they created this is they're not an entrepreneur they didn't create their product and they don't have that when they leave so if you really want to be supportive of your friend and I know that I've had some supportive friends that have bought from me to to try to help me out 
I feel so guilty about that. Like I said, in my journey, it hasn't been easy, but now I'm trying to shed light and that's what I'm doing here. So to know this, I would actually recommend just not, just not buying from them. But if you want to be a good friend, you can still find ways to support them without supporting their MLM. Maybe even change the topic. Be like, I really don't want to invest in that. You, you do your thing, but can we talk about something else together? You know, like something else you bond over because you have to remind them that um, and this depends on how brainwashed they are. I hate to say that, how manipulated they are, because if you try to change the subject and they're really super invested in their MLM, they might just have too firm a grasp on it. And it, they might not give it up as easily uh, with talking with you. But if you try to divert the subject to something like, if you guys love crocheting, I don't know, whatever, hobbies you used to do before the MLM and you want to talk about bowling or something that's great I mean not that you would be bowling right now because it's a pandemic well I don't know because you could be like social distance I, I don't know but <laughs> I mean that's probably better than some of the sports but because <laughs> you know <laughs> just one person at the okay anyway I digress so that is just something for this person, I would just do my best to be honest and say that you're not really interested in hosting a party and you don't really feel comfortable with that. You don't want to do that and you're not interested in MLMs. Just, just say you do your thing and I'm just not into that. It's, it's hard because it really depends it really depends on how invested they are and how they're going to how they're going to take it based on how long they've been in the MLM and what they've been doing um, with you know how brainwashed they are how much Kool-Aid they've had because that's going to determine how they're going to react further but we can't always control how they're going to react we just have to be honest with ourselves and be as honest as we can while also trying to preserve the friendship as best we can, but we also have to take care of ourselves. And so you need to be able to step back and say, hey, I'm not comfortable with hosting a party. I am not comfortable with buying these products and I need to step back. And if they don't like that, then you have to protect yourself. To some extent, you have to protect yourself. Okay. So this is a post recently on Reddit and it says, did my cousin set me up? So my cousin me messaged me last week and told me that she put me down as a character reference for a financial planning firm that she is applying to. A woman called me a couple days later asking me questions about my cousin's character like I thought she would, but apparently my cousin had checked off that I would help her attend licensing classes to work for this financial planning firm. I agreed since my cousin is someone I really care about, but now that I'm thinking about it, could this possibly be a setup for an MLM where they try to recruit me off my cousin by asking me to attend her licensing training? I know some MLMs never reveal what company they work for when they recruit, so that's one of the first things that tipped me off. Anyone go through something similar? I've been this interesting because there are some MLMs that are like this with, you know, insurance and licensing and looking like they're a real thing uh, with like financial planning. There are MLMs that have this and um, it's really confusing sometimes because you wonder what this person is wondering. So, um, it does seem kind of weird that that they would want you to attend. Let me just look. So somebody in the comments actually says, uh, I had something similar happen to me when a friend signed up for World Financial Group, a finance MLM. Sounds really sketchy. I would do more digging. 
And that's kind of what was coming to mind with me is that there are some like that that might be doing that. Because normally if you like have somebody calling about your character reference, they might ask you some questions about the character or the person that they're trying to find out about. They're not going to they're not going to ask you to attend some sort of um, licensing thing. Like, that's not how it usually works. If they're calling to ask, you know, for your reference for somebody for a job, they're just going to be asking you questions about that person to see if they're good for hiring. They're not going to, like, have you attend someplace. I mean, that just seems very red flag to me. So I love that this question has been asked because that is something people don't often think of MLMs as this type of company, but there are some MLMs that look like a legitimate company at first. They don't, especially, especially if they don't give you the name. If they like just sound like they're, it doesn't have a name to it. Like it's just like, oh, for a financial planning firm that she is applying to, but what firm? What firm? If you don't know what firm, then it might be a scam. And if you do know what firm, you can look it up and see if it's an MLM. There's actually a resource where you can look up uh, to see if something's an MLM, but I'll have that linked below since I talked about it. Insurance MLMs, and somebody commented this, insurance MLMs often have their consultants self-pay for their licenses with their states and have a habit of setting up commission requirements that make it hard to get a payout. On the long term, they are less costly month to month, but many states require license renewals every two years. If your cousin can actually pull off sales that grant commission, it is possible to make it work long run. Honestly though, insurance MLMs have a habit of recruiting anyone, no experience required, as they tend to do, and usually they depend on new recruits getting a few friends and family to sign up before burning out in a revolving door system. The insurance MLM doesn't typically lose out since they aren't directly vested financially or time in the agent since it is self-paid and trained with the MLM structure. Yes, um, and some other people are saying it is 100% a setup to recruit. Yeah, so if you don't know the company name and you're a character reference for someone and they're inviting you to come to a training or something, be wary, be wary. Ask as many questions as you need to. If your red flags are going off, chances are it might be an MLM. That is gonna be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment down below, subscribe, and hit that little bell button so you don't miss any future videos. See you next time.